Hey everyone, today we have an Evoke branded uh, automotive television, uh, something you might put in a caravan, um, camper van, you know, motorhome. Uh, it only has 12 volt input um, and it doesn't turn on. Uh, let's see what the model number is. Now it is an EV2029 DVD model. It has the um, DVD player in the side. Uh, control buttons up the side too. Uh, there's no buttons on the front and just some basic inputs. So HDMI, aerial cable, VGA as well. So I wonder if that's output actually. Hmm. No, that's probably input. Right. So let's pull the back off and see what's going on. But uh, yeah, no, no uh, function, no standby light nothing so the front panel separates from the rest of it uh, there's a whole heap of screws um, but you'll find the countersunk screws hold the um, the guts of it into the back housing um, which I think for disassembly purposes it's easier if you leave them in and you get that it comes off with the back housing then um, and then you can disconnect the front and then you can take the other screws out and remove this section here uh, just might make it a bit easier than have everything sort of fall out while you remove it and swing around the place. Got the board out and let's move my pile of SMD miniatures aside. Um, what have we got? I mean like everything looks fine. We'll start at the DC input shall we? Best place to start because uh, you know no power. Let's follow the circuit in. Uh, I, there was no current draw of any sort when I plugged it in, just uh, just to mention that. Let's check for... You all can hear that. Uh, we have a fuse. That's the most obvious place to start. So let's check the fuse. Oh look, the fuse is blowing. Oh, <laughs> I bet someone wired this up in reverse. And the uh, protection diode has kicked in. Has um, not kicked in, <laughs> has done its job. If there is a protection diode, is there a protection diode? I hope there is. Um, otherwise, we've got some other problem. How do you find out why the fuse blew? Well, let's go in. So, what we need to do is, uh, is our fuse that's going to go straight to the center pin of the uh, socket, but it's always, almost always positive. Um, I've actually got an oscilloscope, real old Philips oscilloscope, where they decided to make it negative back then, but uh, that's sort of, I don't know, 40 plus years ago. Um, but for the most part, most of them are center pin positive, and there'll be a sticker on the unit that shows that, so always check if you're not sure. Um, and the reason a fuse blows is due to an overcurrent situation, and the only way you can get more current through it is if... Um, there's a lower resistance to negative or ground. So let's find a good ground point. Now quite often these metal outers of sockets are connected to ground but every now and then they're not so if you're not sure you want <clears throat> to double check there's a capacitor um, negative will be a perfect reference for that so if you need to probe from uh, say the metal can to the negative side of that just to see if it connects through so you know for sure because uh, if you're working on this side of the board it's a lot easier to use the metal can than to try and poke up underneath and you know work, work around both sides but anyway so uh, another good way to check is um, you know big open pads like this they're usually connected to ground just uh, I don't know what they would have put on that actually but let's, let's find out so we've got one probe on the metal can and one on here there you go. So that's pretty confident we're earth. And we'll check uh, the uh, fuse. And we don't have a beep. Now we'll uh, see exactly what sort of resistance we have to ground on the output of that fuse. And we've got right, 8 meg ohms. So I'm pretty confident that uh, somewhere along the way there's going to be a uh, maybe a protection diode somewhere that has done its job. 
uh, I don't know where, it looks like this might go straight into our, um, our uh, regulator circuitry. We've got a, a big IC down there, we've got four coils here, that could be four separate rails driven by that, that IC, um, especially given that there's actually quite uh, fat traces going from each coil into that chip, so hopefully that chip's good. We should possibly check the output of the regulator there. So it probably would be a good idea to even check those two capacitors and just um, measure across them and see what resistance is there because uh, while we may not have a low resistance on the input, uh, if there's a low one on the output and this thing tries to fire up and create rails into a dead short, then that would overload the input as well. So uh, where are we? Negative was on that side. So if we just probe there and there, and I've got I've got yeah thousands of ohms, and again on that one, that's fine. That's absolutely fine. So I'm um, going with blown fuse. Uh, is our only problem. Gosh, that's a biggie. They rated it at 5 amps. So I guess mm, that could be for the mechanism um, for the CD drive. Which, I wonder if uh, that feeds the CD drive directly as well. <laughs> we may need to plug that in and check for resistance to ground in case there's a fault in the drive mechanism, perhaps. So I might uh, pop this out and actually um, run some power to it, just out of curiosity, and see if it does try and pull uh, excess current. Oh, so I've got my um, bench supply set to half an amp max, and I will just going to stick uh, a negative onto negative, and a positive onto the end of the fuse, and we'll see what happens. Just very briefly. <laughs> um, yeah. Hmm. Arky farty. Hmm. It looks like it wants to pull more than half an amp. I wonder what's going to get hot if that happens. Hold that thought. So I've got on a really low current setting. And, uh, yeah, I don't think this is happy when it tries to run. It could be a problem further in. Hmm. There is a jumper. I wonder if this has been opened. There's a jumper. There's a, there's a, there's a jumper here. And it says 5 volt there, where it's sitting. And then it says 12 volt over here. Oh, actually, for, yeah, okay, from memory, I think that's for the um, display panel, because that sets the regulation for the, here's where the panel cable goes on, uh, and you can choose if you want 5 or 12 volts going to the panel. Uh, I have seen that before, so um, we'll ignore that. Uh, okay, so, where to from here? Uh, what if we check our LDOs? Just quickly, so I can see up here, we've got a 3 volt regulator. And if I just probe ground to the output there, that's okay. Mm, that's, that's okay. No low resistance is there. I don't know what this one is, it's unmarked. But that's okay. I mean, unless this is something like it needs it needs 12 volts in, or it doesn't regulate properly, and it just pulls a bit of current. I'm just going to connect it because I've got it on. It's it's sitting at 20 milliamps, <laughs> and I'm just going to slowly increase the current. We're at 200 milliamps. Just make sure nothing's getting hot. Okay, we're at 12 volts at 200 milliamps. All right. 
no, that's that's sitting pretty happily. Nothing's getting hot. I think we're onto it. Yeah, I think I, I think we're fine. I think there was just input capacitance charging, perhaps that was um cause for concern. While I've got that on, I'm just going to do a quick uh, a measurement to see do we have any regulators operating at the moment. No, and it's currently in an off state. It looks like when you put power on, it comes into an on state temporarily. So I'm just going to check that. Okay, yeah, we've got 3.6 on that regulator there. So, and what have we got there? 5 on that one. Cool. Okay. And then it goes into standby after a couple of seconds. So I'm happy that's working. Um, but yeah, use, use current limiting uh, to your advantage uh, to test things before you throw another fuse and you might just waste a fuse if it pops right away. But at least if you put a nice current limit on things and gently bring it up, uh, you can get an idea for whether it's going to function or just blow another fuse. But um, uh, yeah, the, the short to ground test that we had before was, was basically enough. I don't have the exact same fuse and I don't have access to one immediately so I'll have to improvise a little. Now I've taken a larger fuse and wrapped it in heat shrink so it's nicely insulated and um, I'm just going to solder some uh, legs onto the end out of bits of wire cut off the end of other components. It's the easiest way to do it. You don't want to get these, um, you don't want to put too much heat into the end of a fuse. That uh, can cause the glue to bubble up and you can actually make the end, end of the fuse slide off because there's a little bit of slack in there from the fuse wire, but uh, or, or the, the, actually the fuse wire is soldered to the end too, I think, so you can actually completely remove the end cap, although in this case with the heat shrink holding it in place, uh, it's a bit easier, but... Uh, um, yeah, not the best way to do this, but when you've only got so many uh, so many options, it's holding it too far away. Can't get good control. There we go. It's amazing how much heat that they can retain too. Once, you, once you're done, put a piece of uh, insulation tape over that large ground pad just in case anything we do doesn't perfectly insulate the fuse and uh, we'll just have to bend up the wire to get into the hole. I don't think it's going to interfere with anything over in this area, like the mounting post. It's um, There's not a lot of uh, casework going on, but I suppose it could be something else to consider if you're putting in something that's bigger than specified, uh, whether it would interfere with the design of anything else. Just use something a bit stronger. So marking where the hole is, and then we'll bend it at that point. See how close we got. <laughs> Ooh, a little bit far off. Here we go. That looks all right. There's a better angle got it sitting there. Um, I will probably put a bit of, um, actually I will, I will put some uh, hot glue on that as well because being in a uh, motorhome there's going to be vibration and uh, the wall bracket is only so solid so it's probably going to shake a little bit and we don't need this shaking around and eventually breaking the leg off it so we'll do that as well. All right let's see if this thing works. Oh, what do we got going on? 
Oh, look, there's a red standby light there. I hit the power button. It turned green. Now we have a picture. There we go. There you have it, folks. Don't swap the polarity on your plug or uh, she's all over or over. Either that or, I don't know, maybe someone jumps out of the vehicle in reverse or <laughs> any number of things that can happen. You never know when it comes to automotive. Thanks for watching.